wish you were here with me. The waves are breaking along the shore. Cause it's best with Bob. Thank you, Pacho Man. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Conan Huggles on the Rocks. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by Master Spas. S Fuels, right fuel, right time. Hoka, fly, human, fly. Deborah Wetsuits, Quintana Roo, and of course our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest is one of the most unique athletes on the planet. Professional cyclist, professional triathlete, he does it all. Give it up for the one and only Cam Worf. How you doing, Kevin, man? Not too bad, but and I must admit, being here, it's uh, it's really race week with you. It's <laughs> it like the, the official kickoff, you yeah. know. It's um, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Like you follow the Super Bowl and like all the meetings and all the things that go on throughout the week leading up to the game. And uh, for us, this is our Super Bowl. And uh, being on your show is an integral, you know, quite <laughs> fundamental part of our preparation. So um, I feel great to be here on Monday. Kick off a, you know, a the most successful week, week ever. Yeah. Well, and you you finished fifth here. Right, so every th it's podium time, podium or win. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's I got nothing to lose. I mean, that's right. I guess the the beauty of coming here last time and, and not having well, not having a great result. I was eleventh. I went backwards. You realize, yeah, at the end of the day, this is like the race where you get one shot to really yes. do something. And uh, I guess I thought I came here thinking I had all this to sort of stuff to protect, you know, a top five. But really, in reality, it's sort of insignificant. So. Um, I, um, yeah, all or nothing this time around. Yeah. Well, and the hard part is it's every two years now, right? So it's, it's not like we're getting any younger and it's like, okay, there's not that many opportunities left. No, that's exactly right. And uh, I probably realized that last time even more. It was like, wow, I've got to wait two more years and I'll be two years older. I'm already old now. <laughs> so, um, you know, what's, what's that going to look like? But yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I, I feel quite good. Um, I guess I, it's funny. I was talking to um, Marco, my, my soigneur here yeah, from yeah. the team last night. We we're talking about about Sam, uh, and we we're talking about Cannes International Triathlon back in 2018. Um, it was just a, just, you know, we're talking about his family, his background. You know, they've moved from the UK to France and coaching triathlon, etc. And Sam raced that day, and I remember it taking me a long time to catch him. Like I, I, that, you know, 2018. At that point on the bike, I was still, I guess, a bit, you were the guy, bit of a, bit of a upper hand on everyone. And I was like, gosh, it's taking a long... And I finally caught him, ended up winning. I, I outran Tim Don that day. But Sam, I think, was third or fourth. But the funny part to the story is he's been a pro just as long as me. <laughs> so <laughs> he might be, you know, whatever he is, 15 years, years younger, yeah, yeah, 15, yeah. 16 years younger. But he's actually been a professional the same amount of time as me and doing the sport a hell of a lot longer. So, yeah, I am an old man. But uh, in uh, race sense or in triathlon age, I'm probably... Yeah, I'm a spring chicken. You're a spring chicken. And, and the <laughs> thing is, I don't, you know, I've, I've been watching this sport for a few years, and very few people improve that much in running. Mm -hmm. Running is one of those things that, you know, you're sort of a three hour guy or a 310 guy, whatever it happens to be, that's sort of what you're going to be. Mm -hmm. You're the unicorn, man. When you go from like 310, 315, and then you're running 244s, that's, uh, have you surprised yourself? Because it's, it's not often someone gets that much better at running. Uh, I, you know, like anything I try to do, you surround yourself with the best people. And I've been incredibly fortunate with, with Nike from the very beginning. You know, when they contacted me after the first time here in Kona, uh, Brett Kirby, you know, he's, he's been just right there for me though all these years. It's been, what, seven seven year partnership yep. now. And, and they work, you know, gradually with me. And, and I think they've actually enjoyed the, the steady progression. You know, I mean, that's right. sort of, as they would say, it's how it should be. Right. Um, right. Because it's not been like, bang, it's sort of been every year I finally broke three hours and we cracked the 250s and then we got in the 240s. And that and actually fell back a bit the last cup, but now I've taken off again to go 244 to get a PV. So I think it's a project that they've really enjoyed, uh, you know, with me because it's sort of been that progression curve. And, um, and also I'm, you know, pretty open to trying, you know, all sorts of training. I mean, I'll, I'll attempt anything. You know what I mean, <laughs> running marathons in training or multiple long runs a week or fast, slow, whatever it happens to be. I think they enjoy, uh, you know, using me as a bit of a guinea pig with all of that. And um, yeah, I mean, like any of the other, the other guys, the reality is I did not come from a swimming or a running background. Right. I literally had to learn both of those things. You know, of course, luckily I had the cycling and I could swim okay. Um, but and I guess that's what gives me optimism to still be here and still believe I can do better because those are two disciplines that, 
you know, I feel like I get rewarded by just doing more of as the years go on, as, you know, I sort of catch up to how many years they've been doing it for. Right. So, um, yeah, I, st I still feel like there's, there's a bit more in the tank to get better yet. So where, with Team Ineos, at the beginning, when you said, hey, I'm doing, I want to do this triathlon stuff as well, it seems like they have gotten more committed to what you're doing with the triathlon side because you were a bike racer. They're paying you to be a bike racer. And then your, your sort of your side hustle yeah. is yeah. this Ironman thing. Yeah, yeah. I guess the timing of that, you know, it wasn't the team's fault. No one's fault with COVID. And, uh, yes, you know, I kind of right. went onto the team at the time. It was meant to be like the two-prong attack. Um, as far as the focus goes, but of course cycling became the primary because they cancelled Kona twice. <laughs> yes. Um, and then the 22, we kind of didn't even know if it would really happen, so it wasn't a huge focus. And then all the last minute it was on, so we were here. But this time around, they've been really good. I mean, they, they asked me what I felt I needed. You know, I really get a lot out of riding with the team and racing with yes. the team, being around the guys, pushing myself. You know, it pushes me a lot harder than I push myself in training. And then I've had now eight, eight to 10 weeks of, of sort of uninterrupted preparation into, into Kona. I know you and I discussed this throughout the year, what I was gonna do, and everyone's fear is always me racing too much coming yeah. in. And, uh, and it's amazing, because I, I, I almost got on the plane to Chattanooga, you know, four <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I knew that was a good sign. Like, I really wanted to race. I really wanted to race and to hold me back, you know, and obviously everyone around me, no, no, no. <laughs> you need that energy on when you get to Kona and you, you get out on that run course on the 26th of October. So, you know, I've never felt fresher for a training block at this time of the year, I guess, because I haven't been able to race as much. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to see where that puts me this weekend. Well, and if, uh, you know, just looking this year, you, uh, you know, last year you finished Florida with a 244 and went 750. And then 244 uh, Vittoria not like that long ago. So the running is the running is solid there. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing after like Nice sort of fell apart a bit last year. Um, it was again a bit of a disrupted preparation. I yep. got what I deserved there. Um, but the yeah, after that, I made a real conscious effort to get back on top of the running. As I said, went to Florida, got on top of it. I went to South Africa early in the year. I really wanted to win that. Yep. Had a bit of a change of schedule, oh, race week. 10-minute swim. Yeah, well, yeah, no, maybe. it wasn't that. That was the year before. But oh, I, 20, I, in okay. tw this year, I raced, oh, 20, Amst yeah, yeah. Yeah, I raced Amstel Gold and Flesh Wallone in the same week <laughs> and then flew to South Africa. And, and got third there. And got third. But I was leading, I think, with 7K to go. I just ran out of gas. So, you know, I think... And then in Vittoria Gasteiz, you know, I was, I was third there in a very high quality field. Yep. Um, I actually slowed down on the bike when I caught McNamee and Brad Weiss because I knew they needed to qualify for Kona. So I sort of to pace them and keep them away from the guys chasing them. You know, they're good mates. They're old fellas like me. So, you know, I wanted some <laughs> other old blokes here. But then in the end, that group ended up being the podium. And right. had normally, I could have just probably gone ahead and who knows, I might have been in a chance to run that race. Obviously, Sam ended up being disqualified but had a tough run anyway. So, I mean, if you look at it, I've had two Ironmans this year and been third both times. Yep. Uh, I think in this day and age, I mean, most athletes would take that, do the competitiveness of the field. Yes. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think it's great that people probably haven't noticed that. And, uh, and that's what we got, gives me a lot of confidence coming here. Um, you know, knowing that when I line up, I'm generally at the front of the field. Well, and it's, when, I, when I look at the sport, just in the last, since you've been involved, it used to be if you swam 51-ish and you rode 415 to 420 mm. and you ran 245, mm. you're fighting for the win, for sure, in a podium. Now I'm looking at these uh, the people are swimming 46, 47, yeah. they're riding 402, 403, mm. and then they're running 235. Yeah. It's, it keeps the, I think you started the upping the ante on a bike yeah. with taking that bike course record down and down yeah. and down. But it seems like everybody is going faster than ever. Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting evolution, wasn't it? Because obviously that was what happened. It was the big change that happened. Jan came out and said, right, I've got to figure out how to ride that quick and still run right. as fast as I was. Did that phenomenal performance in 19. You know, you obviously saw Gustav and the guys come and Sam obviously, you know, yeah. even raise the, raise the bar a bit again. But it was more the case of the bike just sort of came up to that level, whereas everything else remained the same. Whereas now you're starting to see some of the guys also improve the run a little bit. But you kind of got to be, also you do, but it's, it's generally the guys like Patrick, you know, when he's run very fast, he's giving up a lot of time early on in the race. Right. So there's still that sort of fine line, I think, between riding that quick and, and running much faster. I mean, we might see something amazing out here on the weekend, but, um, you know, it, it's sort of 
there's riding fast and then like a hard bike are two different things these days because some of the courses just can be invariably very fast just the way the course is set up the way the right you know the way the rolls rolls along um and then the way guys are able to save energy you know if you get some wind and everyone's actually having to to ride their hard. own bike and work hard you know it changes the dynamic totally Big for time. the run and um and i guess that's my objective to try and be a part of a race a hard race and uh and i back my legs you know against even the best runners yes. you know to be able to run well under those circumstances i know i can't outrun them when everyone's fresh and we really haven't had that day that mm. day with the howling winds out by javi it's mm. been fairly mellow yeah when you guys have been here and yep. so you haven't had like a Cam Wirth type of day where these guys, where people are going to be beat up getting off the bike and their, their run legs, you're going to run, you're, you're going to run your 240, 246, no matter how hard the bike is. Yeah, ideally. That's, that's sort of my plan. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, but that seems to be the, the way it works for me. So, um, but you're right. I mean, we haven't had, I mean, the first year was a little bit windy. And yeah. I guess that was why we were able to, you know, get to those guys quickly and then also make a bit of a, a race of it on the way back. And obviously benefited Lionel almost winning the race um, but yeah I mean this year we've seen some crazy wind conditions up at Harvey I mean everyone's talking about it I mean the other day it was very hard to stay on your bike and I think for I'm you a, I'm a pretty decent bike handler <laughs> you think? and as far as position goes I don't have too aggressive position when you compare it to some of the other guys so you know I mean I would be very happy with those conditions and I mean, I think it'd be great for the sport if we had, because I think everyone would love to see a bit more, yeah. a bit more drama um, rather than you know just sort of big groups and it turns into a running race. So, um, um, yeah, I mean that's we're in the lap of the gods there. I, I had a nice session yesterday. I rode out and I got up to Waikoloa and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and check out one of the volcanoes. So, I headed up towards Mauna Loa and just thought I'd uh, go and have a chat to the lava gods and see if they could. Good uh, move. Yeah. <laughs> See if they could uh, organize some win for us come Saturday. Yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Mm. Um, compare a little bit. You know, being a professional cyclist, you guys. There's no age groupers out there. It's just the top pros. And then you come to something like this. What is, for you as an athlete? How are they different? Yeah, well, you got to swim and run to start with. Yeah. I mean, that's like a key key difference. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's a totally different environment. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have much interaction with the fans at all. You know, you get a lot of people asking you for your gloves or your jersey, but uh, or other you know, that, yeah. other than that, or a signature a bit more. But um, here, it's just—I think that's the wonderful thing about the sport is the fact that we are all doing it together, and it's all relative. Yeah. You know, I mean, my experience is no different to anyone else's in the race. It's just maybe my time is a little bit different. You know, we all go through the exact same thing. We can all relate 100% yes. to what each other went through. Um, in, in every aspect, getting ready, making decisions. Do I use those tires? Do I run in those socks? Do I, what nutrition am I going to take? Oh, do I do that in special needs? I mean, all these things we, we all go through together. And I, and I just think that's a really unique, beautiful thing about our sport. Um, and also it's just, it's just very, really motivating. I mean, for me having all the age groupers on the course, I mean, I, I don't know if they just, nice to me but i feel like i get a lot of support out there yeah <laughs> and um and it means a lot it really makes a big difference uh you know because we're all going through the tough moments and i guess i just feel terrible that i don't know their name to be able to say good <laughs> luck and you know keep pushing yourself but um yeah no it's it's a huge part of the sport what do you look at as the best iron man that you've had would it be the, Italy? Would no, it be? honestly, my best Iron Man's the one I got coming up. I, just okay. can't, I can't wait to make the next one the best. You know, I, I don't really look back on. Uh, yeah, maybe when always, my career's done, I'll, I'll look back and have a think about what uh, what was my best one. But um, until then, I'm just focused on the next one. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things is I was interviewing you years ago, and we were talking about. I think you did eight Iron Man that year. Yeah. And saying, you know, Cam, it seems like a lot of racing. It's like, well, I, you know, I sort of need to learn the sport. I, I, I'm coming into it late, got to learn the sport. And, and to be honest, I could do a 2.4 mile swim and 112 mile bike ride five days a week, and it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. Still the same? Absolutely. I mean, I, even yesterday, I mean, that's basically what we did with the practice <laughs> swim and, you know, quite a long ride and, you know, feel fine. But, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would happily race more, but I mean, as you run quicker, it just does a bit more damage to the, yes, to the muscles. Does. So, you know, it's a fine line of do you go and race and not run as hard, but then it's kind of pointless. I can do those runs in training now. So that's sort of what has, has cut back my racing. But yeah, as far as my volume goes, I'm just really comfortable. I have tried training less, but it just doesn't seem to work. I'm really comfortable doing a lot of exercise. I yes. would call it. I'm not going to say I'm a big hero that trains harder than anyone else. I don't carry on like that. I... I let the race decide. <laughs> people, exactly. people can decide who they think's trained hard enough. Um, but um, yeah, I, I just think that's yeah. I just love exercising, and this sport is one that really seems to reward it. And I'm just really glad I found it, even if I was older. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, as I said, I don't plan on going anywhere for a little while yet. So one of every triathlete's favorite moments is watching you lead Paris Roubaix on the cobbles, and we're all like. A triathlete is leading the Tour de France on the cobbles. Yeah. And then you, you finish that and go off and run 13 miles or something crazy like that. What, what's the feeling inside the peloton about what you're doing? Yeah, Paris Bay, uh, it's amazing. I mean, there's a lot of guys. There was actually a young guy, Louis Askey, recently, a few weeks ago, he did a, uh, a 358 half Ironman as an age grouper. Oh, my God. And he just raced the Vuelta. You know, he ran 119. I think he swam 28 minutes or something and did the bike. <laughs> but he lives in Andorra. He did a couple of training sessions with Hayden Wild and I. I mean, I use him as an example because every race I go to, there's guys coming up. They want to tell me about their friend that's doing the sport or that they want to do one one day, you know, that they're following it. You right. know, they're, if, if I, often guys offering me advice for Kona. Have you looked at this? Have you <laughs> thought about this? Um, I, yeah, I really feel like uh, the guys, you know, really are engaged in what I'm doing. But the, as I think I've said many times in the past, what I love is they now really admire a Sam Laidlaw, Magnus Ditlev, obviously the Norwegians, um, you know, all the guys, you know, they, they admire the fact that I guess they have a bit of respect for my ability, you yes. know, to ride a bike and, and do my job in the peloton. And yet there's guys in this sport that are, you know, stronger, you know, they're, as they're strong, riding a bike like you. They're, they're doing yeah. that and they're running and they're swimming amazingly well. And it, it sort of really opened everyone's eyes, I think, to how great these athletes are and what an amazing you know sport we've got and how you know certainly how much more professional it's got you know i guess post covid so um for me that's the that's the part that makes me smile just the fact that you know these guys are now looking at my peers and and with admiration you know of, of, of how great our athletes they are well and what we've seen between magnus and sam and christian and gustav the level of cycling is just at a, at a different place than it's ever been yeah i guess i um I made it cool. I made it cool <laughs> to go fast. So uh, I love that, you know. No, it's, it, it is. And, and I guess, like I noticed a number of years ago, it was sort of the easiest opportunity for me to forge my way into the sport and establish myself in a position. So, you know, guys have obviously realized, okay, well, this is, it's pretty hard to learn to run a minute quick or even th swim 30 seconds faster. And I've spoken to Sam you know, the amount of training he'd have to do to swim a bit faster would really negate everything else he does. So, you know, the bike is really presented an opportunity for everyone because obviously there's also the aerodynamics, the, the, the technology, the different things. Um, and then, of course, the faster speeds, you know, with the, you know, the 12 meter draft zone, you know, it's pretty obvious that the fact that everyone stays together, that there's a bit of protection there. Yeah. And obviously the quicker you go, the more so. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we're going faster, so it's actually, sadly at times turning it more into that itu type right. race which we, we we often see on the circuit um that's why here it'd be wonderful i think for everyone if we just had a lot of wins so that just wasn't a factor i love it yeah how about a round of applause for mr cam Worf? <laughs> poncho man take us out baby mountains roll out to the sea i wish you were here with me the waves are breaking along the shore Perfect with Bob. Poncho Man, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>